BC, what's going on? What's going on, bro? Good to see you again. What's shaking? Not a lot, man. Not a lot. I saw the live going up, and I figured, what a great time to hop on, man. I, uh, well, you know, one one big, big thing that's been big on my plate right now that I kind of want to speak on, and it's actually part of the Agagi for anybody that's listening, is setting up exactly these kinds of systems. But you talk about how you allocate the leads that you have coming in into the CRM. I think, I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit, but I, just being honest, I think I could have started making better use of my CRM a lot earlier, right? Yeah. Uh, would, you, would you say you would you say you lean heavily on your CRM, and what CRM do you use? Well, that's changed a lot through the years, man, because. I've changed companies, you know, technology has improved tremendously since I got in the business 11 years ago. I do yeah. and I don't because there's an automation to it, but you need to make sure you're active with it. And this is where making sure that you call them, that they're incorporated into your social media. You do have the right emails, you do events. It's a combination of everything. So when I lean on the CRM, I don't necessarily just lean on the software. I treat the sphere of influence like a gold mine. And I think a lot of people, don't spend enough time actively building it and working it. Everyone's just chasing the next deal, right? Everybody in real estate, most people, 80, 90% of agents are short-sighted. Yeah. I just want the next deal. If you're not doing something next week, forget about it. And I was like that when I started. I didn't wake up until about a month later. Um, and then I really started building my database and working it. So the CRM is great. We use Lofty. It's called Lofty now. Um, very solid software, user-friendly, very good has all the automation that you need. I just think agents need to be very purposeful with not just the automation side of it, but working the clients, doing events, yeah. talking to them, staying in their face and incorporating. Like I get everybody who is in our database to follow me on social media and YouTube. So they see my stuff all the time because mm -hmm. whether they watch it or not consistently, if they do great, if they don't, at least they're getting more notifications and they're seeing my name more. Mm -hmm. Right. And the more channels, I call it channels, more channels people see me through and hear from me, the better it is. Because then when that friend says, hey, we want to sell, you know, a realtor, it's like, uh, I want my name to pop up in their in their head first. Or yeah. wait, there's that guy like he does YouTube. Like, let's find his name. Like, I want that to happen because that's how I've gotten most of my referrals. I get yeah. some, of course, calling and talking and they'll message me. But a lot of times it's when we're not having the phone call or the interaction. They'll reach out to me randomly via text, phone call, email, right? But I know it's through all these multiple channels that I've hit them with, I've been top of mind. And that's where I win the game long term. Absolutely. I was just thinking because as you mentioned that, you know, what would you say it took you about a month before it really kind of dawned on you? And I feel like that's insanely fast uh, turnaround time or insanely fast, let's call it moment of awareness. Whereas I would say most people can go years in the industry without really ever using a CRM or at least not using it effectively. And then yeah. you get to the point where you implement a CRM, but then I think an even larger percentage of people will set that up and then set and forget, right? A very well run CRM, I, mean, I guess in theory would be able to do that. But I think if you agree, the best implementation of it is to set it up to where you're constantly having more activity reminders, right? So not just forget it and have a long-term drip campaign of emails, yeah. but set call reminders, task reminders, yeah. right? That, that, that kind of, of stuff, course. like actually working in the CRM. When I first got in the industry, somebody had told me the, the fortune, your fortune's in the database. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's a little vague. It's not that it is, but at least back when you first start, you don't really get it. Yeah. And I feel like over the course of enough time, I start seeing it like, yeah, like, okay. After enough years in the industry, you have enough phone numbers. You have enough contacts. You've actually have been referred, in theory, enough people that if only you didn't let them slip through the cracks, you could be churning business. I mean, at least a deal a month. 100%. Yeah, dude. Unfortunately, bro, everyone runs around like a chicken with their head cut off. Most people. Again, the statistics don't lie. 90% of agents fail, yeah. right, or people in our industries. And they don't treat it like a business. This, right if you if somebody comes in day one with like coaching the right training and the understanding compared to somebody who's just like hey I'm showing up and I'm getting my license they won't have these things to figure out because they'll be set on the path from the beginning and part of the reason was I had coaching and I was that shit was drilled into my head so that's why my learning curve was very quick right and 
when I look at it and I take a step back now, being more of a veteran now in the business, it, th this is one of the fundamentals of running any type of business is how to work with your current customer base, the leads that will turn into customers in the future, the CRM, that process, converting them long term, what does staying in contact with them look like? Any legitimate business, whether small, medium, or large, has to have those systems in place. But that's one of the fundamentals of running an actual business. And that, that, that's missing in, in today's world. Because again, people watch social media and they're like, oh, well, I can just get my real estate license and I'm gonna make a lot of money. But they don't, there, there's no real thought and effort put behind it. And what I find uh, most common is everything I'm describing is running a business or an entrepreneur and that mindset and structure, most people have a nine to five mentality and structure and they're trying to apply that to real estate. And that's why I get questions like, well, how much do I have to work? Or how long is it gonna take for me to get a deal? And when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, dude, you're coming in with the wrong mindset. And those people, if I give them all my information for free, they're not gonna implement it because they're just chasing the next deal and they have the wrong mentality. And I think that's the curse. That's the curse that's on the industry. And even similar to what we spoke about on the previous live that I posted about people like, oh, they want to skip the work to just make content to try to get leads. It's like, dude, well, if you skip the work, you're not going to build the systems nor the skill set to be able to sustain a real business. So there was a video that you did and you made the comment where you said, if you've been, if you've been watching my videos for X amount of time and you haven't done anything, then you're just entertaining it yourself. Yep. hundred percent. No. And that's the majority, bro. That's the majority, right? And it's cool and it's necessary to have the entertainment factor on your social media, absolutely. But most people are just there for the entertainment. It's like, it, it's literally another version of the television. That's what it is, right? And they may have moments of inspiration or whatever, but you know, then they'll just be the people who share the memes, like, oh, work hard, wake up early, work out, read, you know, make your calls but they're not doing it or they're not doing it consistently. And that's just, that, that's just the nature of it, bro. You know, and then everyone, it's, it's no different than school or the corporate world. You know, you have a few people who are killing it and everyone else is just kind of there. Piggybacking off of that, are you a big believer, and it's individual, but are you personally, BC, a big believer in morning routines or just get the F to work? Just do what works for you. What do you think? Do you well, have yeah. a set every single day, every single day morning routine? Well, you see, I, the precursor to a morning routine is being disciplined and honoring your word as a person, right? And that's what, what leads to it. And originally that started with me emulating my coaches, my mentors, and the good people that I learned from before me. So let's take it before real estate. I didn't use the word morning routine, but I was talking to my coaches and trainers and saying, hey, what do I need to do in the morning, the afternoon, at night? What does my workout structure need to be? What do I need to do to be the best fucking basketball player on the planet to give me the best chances of making the NBA? Right? So now we get into entrepreneurship, and if it's a new world, we read, we learn from our coaches, and they say, hey, in the morning, do this, do this during the day, and then do this at night. We say, and we give it that, that the linguistics of morning routine and all that, but basically, it's this is your structure, and you need to be disciplined to follow it. That's all it is. So do I believe in it? Absolutely, because having some sort of routine or repetition, because that's all that routine is, it's doing something over and over, is necessary to be good at anything. Otherwise, because people will say, well, find what works for you. Let's say somebody says that to oppose what I say. Dude, if I'm a new entrepreneur, how the fuck am I going to know what works for me? What am I going to default to? what's comfortable for me, what feels easy. So in that case, the realtor is going to say, well, fuck cold calling and talking to people. I'm just going to dance on TikTok. That's easier. I can just stand behind my screen, right? Yeah. So that, that stuff can, can lead to a lot of issues. And mm -hmm. when you look at it, we always look at somebody who passes us the torch, the, the person before us, right? And you look at athletics, you know, movie, uh, you know, Hollywood, what we do. We, we all came down from the lineage, right? You learn from your coach or the person who taught you and it just gets passed down and down. I just think in real estate for whatever reason, um, and this is in other areas too, people want to defy that, that programming or that structure for whatever reason, that they think they can do better. It's their ego, I don't know what it is. Like I just got a comment today on YouTube that I'm gonna, I'm gonna post. It said, I made a, a community post 
you know, I forget what I wrote, but someone's like, well, what's the solution? And by the way, this is somebody who's been following me for five years. Five years, right? What's the solution besides get a coach and da da da? I'm like, bro, that is the fucking solution. Yeah, You've been following like me for five story. years. Yeah. It's like, what do you want me to tell you? Like YouTube and all this shit is great for general information, but if you want to get specialized help and instruction and, and go in depth, yes, that's what you need. Everybody needs it. I don't know yeah, why people funny. fight that. Like it blows my mind. You know, and to me, for somebody to fight that, I would say you're pretty fucking arrogant, dude. If someone wants to fight, they would say, because you think you're better than everybody else that you don't need that. Like, and to me, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. But um, to that point, yeah, bro, like you, you need the structure, you need the routine. And when I, when I look back on my athletic career, it was the same thing. I did a lot of the same things and maybe I would upgrade a few things, but it was always like clockwork. Boom, 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 boom. And I just emulated that same work ethic in real estate. And that's what helped me with social media, real estate sales and all that other stuff. You know, I'm not special. I was just able to do those things and follow the routine and what I was told to the T. And the closer you follow that, the more you're going to emulate that, that end result, which is all star top 10% or, you know, whatever it is that you're looking for. You know, it's funny. They say the, the, the similar comparison there in the fitness world and the bodybuilding world is, uh, you know, you want to be in a certain kind of shape. It's like, okay, well, eat clean, work out, you know, and people are like, no, that, that can't be it. But like, <laughs> stop holding your secrets. That, that, that can't yeah. be, you know, it's like, it, it, it's really that it, it really is just that. It's true, bro. Like I, I've, I've been sub 10% body fat for, I don't know how long. And it's just because I work out and I eat right and I take care of myself and it's a priority for me. So people hit me up, oh man, it's like something special, bro. It's just when you're out drinking and partying three or four nights a week, I'm not doing that shit. I'll go out, but yeah. I'm not drinking, right? I'm not eating that bullshit that you're eating. I'm eating clean, right? I'm making sure I get exercise. Well, man, what do you do when you travel? I walk a lot. I walk like 10 or 15,000 steps a day. That's what keeps me lean. Oh man, walking is boring. Well, there you go, bro. Fucking put on your earphones and listen to an audio book, you know, but again, priority if it's a priority for you you'll figure it out and that's that's what it comes down to because you know the bodybuilding scene is an example kind of like the olympics where you guys will work your ass off for a year or two years to be on stage for a minute or 30 seconds and all of that work comes down to that minute so if there's any flaws right and and you finish second or third i know those individuals are sitting back there like fuck that one time i slacked off i shouldn't have that week that i took off I shouldn't have done it. And it haunts you. And that's what I tell people at the end, if you don't get the result, because we're in something in industries that we don't have that one moment, like, you know, the bodybuilding show where you get, you know, the yeah. first call out or the second call out for that, for us, it's like the listing appointment or the buyer appointment. Right. And it, I, I tell people, if you did all that to go on the listing appointment, then you don't have the skill set to get it signed. You just wasted all that fucking time and effort and you did it for nothing because you didn't get the listing. How does that not just destroy you? And I remember the sting of that and saying, fuck that. I'm going to get every fucking listing because I had to call X amount of people, knock on X amount of doors, follow up X amount of times, qualify them, drive out here, prepare the fucking paperwork. That was a lot to get this one opportunity. Do you think I'm going to let this shit slide? Fuck no. Because the like difference between a no and a yes is – nothing or a twenty thousand dollar paycheck that's fucking big like that's mm -hmm. big you know and all we need to do is when you when you connect the dots it wasn't difficult to get there and, and seize that opportunity you just had to do the right things but then people skip it they don't want to do that mm -hmm. it's like a saying that i just heard recently that's a, a an ounce of precaution or an ounce of yeah an ounce of an ounce of prep is worth a pound of cure so it's better to do all the yep. things ahead of time, do the preparation, than to try to worry about trying to fix it after when there might be no fixing it at that point anymore. Yeah, absolutely, bro. And it's it, it's nuts, man. And, you know, a lot of people, they don't have the right examples around them. They waste a lot of time. Like, I get it. But I think when individuals get serious, they'll, they'll do what it takes. It's just we have to have the people willing to do what it takes. And I think that's where a lot of people fall short is they're just – they're still looking at success or whatever, real estate, right? I want to make a hundred grand. If I gave them a list of what they had to do, people nitpick. Well, I'll do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It's like, well, you're not going to get it then, bro. And mm -hmm. I still think even in a 
in an arena like that, it would be no different, bro, than if I jumped into the bodybuilding scene and you gave me a game plan and I start critiquing your game plan when I have zero experience and knowledge of the bodybuilding world. That would be idiotic. I'd be a fucking idiot to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'd be sitting there like, what do you know, bro? That's probably what you're thinking. Like, who are you to fucking critique it? That's what I think when people say this, but they don't see that, right? And I, but it's just us getting in our own way. And, and that's why I try to work with people so closely, especially like in Distinguished Asian and the Agagi, to really help them change their perspective and how they view things and how they process the world to see things like we're talking about here. Because this is the stuff that goes underneath the radar. And if you don't figure it out, you don't even realize that you have an issue. And you just mm -hmm. live your life wondering, damn, I keep stumbling and falling and I'm not getting results. But we've got to strip the layers back and get even down to how you perceive the world, how you think, how you process everything, and your perspective on the whole thing. Because if that's flawed, then shit, you're already starting off with like one leg in a race. Mm -hmm. You're not going to win. Mm -hmm. Like having a... Like having an old computer and trying to run new software. It's just like, I mean, it's you, not gonna you work, have bro. the software, but it's, yeah. just, it's not going to run it. It's yeah. there, but and it's not And unfortunately, that stuff is the toughest because, again, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of attention and time, and it's not sexy. It's boring to do that type of stuff. And that's another reason people don't want to do it, you know? Yeah. Do and it. they think something the else. Like, well, if I, just get, if I just get a six-pack, I'll be okay. If I just look good in a suit, then I'm going to get the deal. It's like, nah, dude, that's only one piece of the puzzle. So they'll, they'll look for something else to think that it will fix that problem when it won't. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Brian, good talk, brother. I'm going to let somebody else take the mic. Let's do this cool. again. Bye, bro. Thanks good seeing you, me. man. Appreciate it, brother. Good to see you.